Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to model steel bridge structures in STAD Pro Connect Edition. This course is specifically designed for the students that will be competing in the ASCE, AISC, Student Steel Bridge Competition. In this particular video, we are going to be focusing on assigning specifications to the members in our model and to create supports. We will now turn our attention back to our sample model that we created in the previous series of videos. For this video, we're going to be focusing on assigning specifications to the members in our model. To start this process, we're going to go up to our workflow page control area and now select the specifications tab. You're going to notice that when this page is selected, the specifications dialog is going to appear in the data area. Now we have several different types of specifications that you can assign to either nodes, beams, or plates in your model. For this course, we're going to focus on a couple of our beam specifications. So in the specifications dialog, you can now click on your beam button. Now we can see several different types of specifications here. The first option we see are the release, and this is basically to control the member end fixity of each member in your model. Now, by default, when all of the members are created in STAD Pro, they're automatically assigned as fixed on both end of the member, the starting end and the ending end of the member. If that doesn't completely simulate the end conditions that you have in your model, you're going to want to manually assign a release to those particular members. For our model, for example, we're going to assume that some of our bracing members in the top truss are pinned on both ends. So I'm going to start by selecting this release tab, and I need to define this for the starting and ending end of the members separately. I'm going to start with my starting end of the members. I'm going to tell the program it's going to be released, and then I need to pick which degree of freedom should be released. For a simple pinned connection, we're going to release our MY and MZ. Now, MY and MZ indicate that we're going to release the local axis, the local Y axis, and the local Z axis. We're going to release their moments. Once we enter this specification, we're going to go ahead and click the Add button. And then we're going to repeat this process again for the ending end of the member. Once we create our specifications, we're then going to go ahead and assign them to the appropriate members in the model. This, for, To do, accomplish this, I'm going to select my specification. I'm going to hold down my control key and select the members that it's applicable to. Once I'm done, I can say assign to selected beams, and then I'm going to click on my assign button. Now we're going to notice that STAD Pro is going to give me an indication at the end of that member. Now, if the member end fixity is different from one end versus the other, you might be wondering, how can I tell what the starting end of the member is and the ending end of the member? If I can see here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover my mouse over any member in the model. Now, I can very quickly see from the color coding that STAD Pro has given me that the starting ends are always indicated in green and the ending end of the member is always in blue. So if I had a pin at one end and not at the other, I'd be able to identify which is the starting end to make sure I assign my specification appropriately. Another way to check that is to make sure that the circle is appearing at the right end after you assign the specification. So I'm going to repeat this process for the other end of the member. In addition to member and fixity, I'm also going to want to, for this particular model, assign some axial restrictions on a couple of my members. To do that, we're going to go back to the beam button, and I'm going to find several different areas that I can accomplish this. The first one we're going to take a look at is the truss specification. This will be used to tell the program that we have a truss member, and whenever something is assigned as a truss, truss member, what it's doing is it's telling STAD Pro that it can only carry axial loads. 
In addition to that, I also have a compression only and a tension only specification. These will be used to define compression only or tension only members. Uh, compression only springs are capable of carrying compressive forces only, and they will be automatically inactive for any load cases that create tension in them. And the same re will result for a tension only member. For this particular model, I'm going to use the truss specification. So I'm going to go ahead and select the truss specification. I'm going to assign it to all of my um, diagonal members in my lattice frames. So I'm going to grab my specification. I'll click the Add button, and it's going to automatically close. I'm going to assign this to all of the members in my model that have that circular cross section, that specification that I assigned that was custom. Now, to do that, to select all those members quickly, I can go to my Select tab in my ribbon, and I can select members based on their property name that's been assigned to them. So I'm going to go ahead and say by property name, and here I could select all those circular members. I'm going to finish this off by clicking the Assign button, and then I'll confirm that with Yes. Now you should be very careful and review all of the specifications that are available through this area to see which is appropriate for your model, as you're going to want to simulate your structure in STAD Pro. After you are done assigning your specifications, you're now ready to move on to the supports for your structure. In the Workflow Page Control area, I'm now going to select on the Supports page. When the Supports page is selected, you're going to know that the Supports dialog is going to appear in the Data area. I'm now going to go ahead and click on the Create button. And you can see that we have a variety of different type of supports that we can create. We can create a fixed support, which will be restrained against all six degrees of freedom. We can also select a pinned support, which will be a support that is restrained in all three translational degrees of freedom and free to the three rotational degrees of freedom. Now, if one of these fixed or pinned supports doesn't work for you, you can also select um, any of the fixed but or enforced but supports to customize the supporting conditions as you best want to simulate them. What we're going to do for this training is we're going to go ahead and assign a fixed support to our base nodes. So I'm going to select the Fixed Support tab, and we'll go ahead and click the Add button. Now supports will get assigned to nodes in the model. So what I need to do is I need to highlight the support and then select the nodes I want. Now since I'm already on the supports page, STAD Pro has automatically changed my cursor to be the nodes cursor. So I'm going to just hold down my control key and select the nodes I want in my model. Once I've identified my supporting nodes, we'll go ahead and click the Assign button. So I'm going to go ahead and say Assign to View. I'm going to click on the Assign button. And I'll go ahead and click Yes. Next, I'm going to select my first physical member load. Now, this is going to be assigned to my top cord members. Now, I only This video is part of the Modeling Steel Bridge Structures video series. A link to the series playlist is available here. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.